episode, I think 35, somewhere in there. This episode, we're gonna forge a spatula. We will be forging a little chunk of copper. We'll be using eight inches of quarter by one flat bar, and this will be the final product. We'll rivet it together, forge a hook on the end, and yeah. So without any further ado, let's do this! I'm gonna mark about an inch. I'm gonna forge it down from one side. So we're fullering it on one side. You could take a bar, you could fuller it this way. But if you don't have anything like that, you can use the edge of the anvil. So this part, is so forging a hook. And we're gonna offset the material off to one side Forge a hook, maybe put an eye. You know, keep everything straight. Keep everything square as you're working. Most of all, keep the metal hot. I think I'll use a little bit bigger hammer. So yeah, this is just some quarter by one. If you're having a hard time doing this movement, come off to the side. It's a little bit easier. And you work from the tip and you can work back. Now if I forge it this way, I might cause too much movement right here. You can draw it out on this side. When I get to right here, I'm going to be on the face of the anvil. Back in the fire. Eye tutorial, you could figure out the math if you wanted, how big a eye you're gonna do. In this situation, we're just gonna wing it. So if this is about 3 8 of an inch thick, I'll have plenty of material to turn this eye. Again, yeah, I'm working from the back to the tip. And then from the tip back. These kind of hits, I'm forging it, but I'm kind of cleaning it as I go. Because we have a lot of movement happening in here. I don't want any cold shuts. So I'm constantly drawing it, drawing it, drawing it. And keep everything flat and square. That way when you come back to the anvil from the forge, everything's nice and clean and ready for you. Don't forge and get this all messed up and go in the fire and come back and it's all a tangled mess. Come clean, leave clean. You could also do different kinds of eyes and hooks with this setup. For this one, I'm actually going to bend that tang down so the eye starts outside of the material. All right. So another thing we have going on are these steps from the forging. So then the next heat, I'm going to bend this tang down and on the edge of the anvil, I'm going to clean that up and clean this shoulder up. Okay, over the edge of the anvil, bring this guy down. Don't go full 90. And then right here, kind of like the upset corner, we're going to forge that and clean that up. At this point, you could do far as you want it. You can make it a complete 90 if you wanted. I'm just gonna keep a nice soft radius right here. And I'm cleaning it up. And again, kind of putting it in the air and knocking it back. And then I have my hand against my hip as backing it up. Not very much. I mean, just doesn't take much to uh, to do that movement. Keep it clean. So things I like. I like this sharp corner here. I like this gradual taper here. Kind of like the swell going on here. The next step we'll do is we'll go to the horn and we will turn this eye to make a hook. Okay, starting at the tip here. 
I'm going to start knocking that down, get that initial bend going. You know, with this setup, you can do quite a bit of different shapes and how far you want to go and how extreme is, is completely up to you. Just bring that around. Kind of tuck in the edge. You have a really sharp anvil, a really sharp horn. You can get clever as you want, or roll that as tight as you, as you want. So this next heat, I'm actually going to get the tongs and we're going to curl that tip out. Don't need a lot of heat. I'm just going to grab that and bring it out. So I got that material out so I can reach it. And I'm just going to tighten it up. Just a cute little scroll, not much. So for this handle, I kind of would like to flare this out and it tapers back. So we're gonna use a top fuller. Now if I had a striker, I could hold this up and I could walk this down and make this valley. But I don't have a striker, so I'll be doing it under the power hammer. It'll be the same movements. So we'll get it hot and we'll hit this and start spreading that material out a little bit. I'm also going to do it the length of my handle all the way down and then I'm going to forge my taper down and I'm going to let the sides roll and collapse and do what they're going to do. Give this uh, some personality. So when you do your first pass, don't expect it to be perfect. You're laying the, the line down to follow. With each one, you can clean up a little bit more. Even if it starts, like I have this bend here, I'll fix that. Doesn't have to be perfect the first. So with the power hammer, I'm going to use what's called a flatter. It's a top tool. It's good for tapers and cleaning work up. I'm going to use this to clean up my edges and also start making this into a taper. Alright, I'm going to come below that fuller line. Start taking advantage of some of this undisturbed material. Okay, as far as under the hammer, I like that. I'm gonna do the rest at the anvil. So I'm gonna clean up some of the power hammer marks by hand and draw this down. I don't want it to bend too much right now. I want to reduce that material, which also is going to mess with the proportions of the fuller I put in. That's why I did the fuller first. That way it's going to clean up that work under the hammer. But also we're going to give the impression that this quarter by one flat bar it's a little bigger. Okay, just keep forging it down to what makes you happy. You know, a lot of times you might find yourself doing a demo and you don't know what to make. And people seem to think 
that things that are functional are more interesting than things that are just straight pretty. So if you make something functional and pretty, you're good to go. So we got a nice void here from the top fuller, controlling my edges as they come down. So for spatula, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to neck this down and then we'll cut off the tab that we're going to mount the copper to. We got a nice descending taper going on. You know, because that's always frustrating. You're doing a demonstration, typically a public one, and everyone's watching. Ooh, ah. My grandpa was a blacksmith. Can you shoe my horse? You always got that jerk. What is it? What would you use it for? I did a bunch of bowls. Like steel bowls, not marijuana bowls. I'm in Colorado, in case anyone didn't know. But uh, I did a bunch of bowls thinking that would be a good item to sell. And this lady was holding one and she says, Rory, this is beautiful. I love it. And I'm like, all right, we're gonna make a sale. And she goes, what would I use it for? I said, well, ma'am, I wouldn't eat cereal out of it, but maybe you could uh, put something in it or just let it be itself. She scuffed and walked away. So I'm gonna fuller this. I'm gonna use a cross peen, just like power hammer dice. And Bring that down. Oh, crap. Rotate it. So I fullered it, and then I'm going to, on this next heat, work to that point. I want my taper to, to stop. Stop, start, however you want to look at it. Right there. Yeah, I've done quite a few different kind of shows and different groups. It's always interesting, sometimes disappointing. You know, it's a lot of work, especially when you're forging all this stuff by hand. And someone looks at you and says, this is great, but what would I do with it? All right. So this is where the copper is going to go. I'm going to go a little bit more, still a little chunky. No chunky. So you see how this weight on the end of this is like kind of fighting against me? It's probably best if I just cut this off so I'm not fighting it. So I'm really trying to focus on this, but I got, you know, eight inches of quarter by one flapping around, waving at me. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, I don't know, probably leave an inch off of that and then finish forging this out. Or you're, you do a demo and someone starts talking about their grandpa. My grandpa was a blacksmith. Seems like everybody has the same grandpa. I'm just making an observation. And then you ask them, oh yeah, you still got his stuff? And then they get all mad. I guess I'm supposed to stop what I'm doing. And let them talk about their grandpa. It makes me sound like a jerk. I probably should let them talk about their grandpa. I'm such a jerk. You watched me demo and I ignored you, I'm sorry. All right, so I cut that material off and I can focus on this lower half. I like this, I like this top part. I'm not too crazy about this. It's a little rough. You know, as I'm thinking about this more, I think I am a jerk. If you want in the comments, tell me about your grandpa. Was he a blacksmith? Was he a welder? Did he shoe horses? Was he a jerk? I mean, mine was a jerk. Ah, I feel guilty now. Now I'm feeling bad when I'm forging. I shouldn't forge and feel bad. So I'm just drawing this out until I think it looks clean. It's a little fat. Oh, you like it? Fat. 
you know, most of this is happening right here on the edge of the anvil. Don't get too lost back here. You want that material to move. Remember, it's going to move under you. So a little straightening. Take some of these kinks out. This low red heat's a good cleanup heat. You still move stuff around without moving too much around. Don't work on cold iron. Only for cleanup. That's where I am right now for cleanup. Okay, so this next part, we're gonna make this guy round. We're gonna come on the edge here, and box those corners in, and see if we can uh, make this an interesting shape. A little hot. That's okay. We'll work with it. So, basically, you're knocking those corners down, and then from there, making it roundish. Again, kind of similar to the snub end, like we just did with the hinge. Seems like if you can do a snub end scroll, you get pretty far just with that exercise. You guys wanting something to do, practice snub end scrolls. They're attractive, very appealing. Everybody loves them. So we want a one-sided shoulder. So, I got it hot on the edge of the anvil, I'm gonna use a sharp point. I could forge that down and make a, a nice shoulder. We'll do that. Okay, keep in mind orientation. So this is the top pretty part I want you to see. So I'm gonna flip it over and then bring this mama home. Okay, I went wide because I wanna put two rivets in there. We got a nice clean shoulder for that copper to sit inside of. All right, some of you guys are asking about forging copper. We want to keep it at a red heat. It work hardens fast. If you get it hotter than a red into the oranges, it falls apart. If you are using this in your gas forge, grab a piece of plate and put the copper on the plate. That way, if it does melt, it doesn't stain your forge and if you're using the coal forge just never walk away from it from either forges always keep an eye on it and pay attention to it you can work it cold and you have to be careful not to work hard in it because it can crack so i want to use this step block because i'm going to come in with the cross peen and i'm going to flare this out that's what these are for your all that energy is going into that tip and I also don't want to mark the face of my anvil. I want to preserve that. So having different variety of these are always handy. So this is more sacrificial than my anvil. I'll bring the copper out and I'm going to start flaring it out. All right, that's a little hot. The other thing you can do if it's a little hot is let your anvil soak some of that heat up. So right here, I'm a dull red. Ideally, that's where I like to be. And then I'm going to start in the center and start flaring it. Notice my hammer is in one spot and I'm moving the copper as much as possible underneath it. So keeping in mind this pattern, I'm going to come in straight to the material, not try to come in crooked. So I don't want to nick it, I want to come in flat, take advantage of that peen. And also doing it this way, I'm getting a really kind of a neat texture to go with it. Now, all right, so spatula worldwide. I got my pancakes. Yeah, that's a good pancake. I am gonna bevel the edge. Because we think about it too, we don't want it to like be tearing up the food because it might ride on those ridges. So we can give it a little lip. So design wise, we got a nice radius top and the bottom, you can see the light underneath it has a radius to it as well. So one thing I forgot about is the edges. I don't like crisp edges, especially on tools. You can take a file, I'm just gonna take a flap disc and I'm gonna knock these corners down. We got the fuller done. 
got the sides clean, but I'm gonna put that fuller side out. I'm gonna hit it, cause it to curl. I'm kind of, I'm hitting it this way, causing that to bend. If I can get the bottom to bend, great. If not, you put it on edge a little bit. Can I get that cupping going on? Okay, then we're gonna put the handle part. Yeah, I like that. So by doing this, we're taking advantage of some hollow space to give this volume without metal being there. It might be always a trick if you're making something, is try to take advantage of the space around the steel instead of just simply always adding more metal. And then uh, we'll get the copper mounted and then we'll heat it right here and we'll, we'll kick it up. Different ways to clean it, so you can clean it in muriatic acid, you can wire brush it, I'm gonna use a wire wheel. So this is the top. I mean, you could do it any way you wanted. I want the, that to be the top. So I'm gonna line this guy up. So visually, kind of in the middle, in there. I'm gonna transfer my lines just with a silver pencil. And then... Oh, my microphone died. So we're gonna do a little picture in picture. So this last part is setting the rivets. These rivets are pretty small. I didn't need to heat them up. Slam them down, get them done. And then again, finishing with Johnson's paste wax is acceptable. This is a different kind of floor wax. It's just like Johnson's paste wax. Rub that on there, let it set up. Wipe off the excess stuff when it cools down. And then when you're done with your spatula, and you're using it, it might rust a little bit from the oxidation of the steel. <laughs> Again, you can just wash it off with a Brillo pad, reapply that wax, a little bit of maintenance with these kind of utensils, but they are really fun to make. I would think if you did it right, you could probably sell these really well. And they're, they're really straightforward and simple. You have sets at home, you can go to the store, look online, get some ideas, some inspiration to come up with your own. So I hope it helped. Thank you guys for all the support. Go to DurySmith.com. Special thank you to the Patreons. Love you guys. Check me out on any flavor of social media. All the links are at the bottom. And most of all, until next time, keep it dirty. I want to make a hamburger.